Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the MXNet Day. Uh, my name is Przemysław Tremdak, and I would like to talk about the MXNet's dependency engine and the work we are doing in order to get to the ultimate efficiency. First, we need to understand how the MXNet is currently scheduling its operations. Uh, let us consider a simple code shown on the left side of the slide. In this case, we first assign value to variable A, uh, then use that variable to compute B and C, and finally, we use both of them to compute D. The easiest way of executing such code is doing it serially, one operation at a time. It, this approach, however, does not really take advantage of all the information that we get from this code. The missing component here is the knowledge that B and C are actually computed independently, uh, only reading but not modifying input A. Uh, to get advantage of this, we can construct the graph of dependencies and uh, execute the code by traversing this graph, uh, exploiting as much parallelism of the execution as possible. This is the approach taken by the MXNet's engine. It computes the lightweight dependency graph on the fly from the imperative code uh, by tagging each resource used by the operation as either mutated by the operation or just read by it. Therefore, uh, it uses concepts of the data flow, uh, but is not actually limited to the, to the tensors with data. Uh, other resources like um, random number generators or workspace uh, are also scheduled the same way. Uh, finally, uh, it uses priority queue and multiple pools of worker threads, uh, one pool per device, uh, to effectively traverse this dependency graph. Okay, uh, we see now that the engine of MXNet is quite sophisticated, but let's ask ourselves a question. Should we even care? Uh, in the end, it is the end-to-end -end speed of training or inference that matters to the end user. Fortunately, uh, this way of scheduling operations is at least potentially advantageous. Uh, coming back to our simple example, uh, scheduling the computation of both uh, B and C um, at the same time, we are able to better utilize the compute resources. Uh, for example, if the single operation uh, is not able to span the entire chip. Uh, this way, uh, even though each of those operations uh, takes longer, than if it was executed alone, uh, the end-to-end -end time gets uh, smaller. There is actually an additional benefit of having the engine in the backend, uh, coming from using Python as the, um, the front-end language. Uh, in the serial execution, work is launched from the Python thread. Uh, this, uh, especially when the GPU kernels get smaller, uh, like for example during inference, results in being limited by the single core CPU speed. Uh, this is a problem, uh, especially with the, for example, heavy data pipelines, quite often also CPU based, uh, putting additional stress on the CPU and the operating system. Uh, and that results in jittery execution speeds and slowdown. Uh, on the other hand, the backend engine enables minimizing the work done on the Python thread as well as multi-threading the kernel launches, uh, resulting in much lower CPU overhead, even for smaller workloads. In fact, uh, the low CPU overhead was the reason um, that MXNet was chosen by NVIDIA for the large-scale submission of SSD in the MLPerf 0.7 benchmark. Uh, a change from PyTorch to MXNet resulted in over four times the increase in scale um, to 1024 GPUs, with each GPU operating on batch size of just two images. Uh, to quote the blog entry about that achievement, uh, the move to MXNet for the large-scale SSD training runs was motivated by MXNet's excellent runtime performance due to hybridization, which enabled us to write imperative code but execute it with the low host size overhead of symbolic graph execution. Okay. So everything is amazing. Uh, MXNet is the fastest and its engine does not have any flaws, right? 
Well, <laughs> to answer that question, we should take a closer look at the lifetime of the MXNet engine op on the GPU. It should be pretty simple. Uh, we just launch the operation onto the GPU and then it runs, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not really true. Uh, as we discussed previously, MXNet uses the dependency engine with multiple threads launching work. Therefore, there are additional steps needed to keep the execution correct. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a small overhead of uh, picking the next ready operation from the priority queue. Uh, more importantly though, uh, there is also a step required for updating the internal data structures of the engine with the new dependency data. This step can only be done once the operation is actually finished, so there is also a need for synchronization uh, of the worker thread with the GPU, which is susceptible to jitter coming from the CPU load and operating system policy for, uh, for waking threads. Those additional steps uh, result in a pretty significant overhead of the execution of uh, tens to hundreds of microseconds. The MXNet engine is definitely not perfect and could be optimized. One such optimization, which is used currently and uh, very important to achieve those, um, those big speed ups, uh, is the bulking of operations. Uh, the engine accepts multiple tasks, but internally uh, it combines them into a single operation, uh, resulting in multiple consecutive uninterrupted launches. This amortizes the cost of the overheads, which results in a big speed up. Uh, to test the impact of bulking, I did perform inference with uh, batch size 32 on ResNet 50 model from Gluon CV three times. Once without hybridization, once uh, hybridized and fully bulked, and once hybridized but not bulked. It turned out that 80% of the difference between the hybridized and non-hybridized case was due to bulking. However, a relying on bulking approach uh, has a few problems. First of all, it works only on hybridized models where the total number of operations is known. Uh, what is more, uh, this weakens the advantage of the parallel execution capabilities of MXNet as all of the operations inside the bulk are serialized and parallelism can only occur across the bulks. Uh, to showcase the problems that occur even when bulking is enabled, uh, I will show profiles of two real-world cases. Uh, the first one we encountered during the optimizations of uh, BERT inference. As the actual inference was taking only a few milliseconds, it turned out that the copy operations uh, to and from the GPU were taking a significant portion of the time and they were completely dominated by the overheads from both Python and the imperative execution. Another example uh, comes from the MLPerf SSD submission where uh, the handshake between MXNet and Horvod is completely exposed uh, as it needs to wait until the end of the backward pass for the dependencies to be cleared. Uh, even though it takes only a few hundred microseconds at scale, it is a significant overhead and also a source of jitter, which significantly limits the scaling efficiency. In order to tackle the challenge of the, uh, of the overheads in the imperative mode of operation, uh, we need to take a different approach. Uh, let us consider the chain of operations uh, executed by worker thread. Uh, in the current approach, uh, clearing the dependency means that specific resource is ready right away to be used by any other operation. The operation uh, using that dependency is already finished. Uh, as we saw previously, this results in a significant overhead. It, the problem with this approach is that it does not take advantage of the fact that the GPU is a separate device and so can function independently from the host CPU. Uh, having synchronization right after the launch uh, basically prevents the CPU from ever uh, getting ahead of the, of the GPU execution. Therefore, 
Uh, let us consider a different, uh, more asynchronous approach. Uh, in this proposed approach, the operation updates the dependencies as soon uh, as the work is scheduled on the GPU and not finished. And it is the subsequent operation that needs to perform the synchronization to ensure correctness. Uh, as we can see, uh, this already improves the execution time by overlapping the dependency update with the GPU execution. Uh, that said, we can do even better. Uh, and to show that, let's consider two cases. Uh, in the first one, both operations end up being launched by uh, the same worker thread. In this case, since both of them are scheduled to the same GPU stream, uh, that work is automatically serialized and we do not actually need to perform uh, any synchronization with the, you know, with the host CPU. In the second case, the operations are launched by uh, two different threads. In this case, we can uh, use the CUDA events mechanism uh, in order to keep the proper ordering of the execution while still avoiding uh, synchronization with the host. This will enable a much better overlap of the CPU and the GPU work, uh, effectively eliminating most of the engine overheads, even in the case of the imperative execution. There are obviously challenges to this proposal. Uh, the most significant one is the handling of the memory allocations, as uh, the memory freed over the course of the execution will no longer be guaranteed to be unused and ready for use for something else. Uh, the other challenge is uh, the need for a breaking change uh, to the, um, the interaction with some of the external libraries like Horovod, uh, which do rely on direct pushes uh, of work to the MXNet engine. Uh, finally, this proposal touches the very core of MXNet uh, and so needs to be handled very carefully in order to not introduce hard to pinpoint bugs in the execution. That said, uh, the opportunities are very enticing and the speed improvements to the imperative execution uh, are greatly needed and will definitely help the adoption of MXNet in the data science community while the better scaling to multiple GPUs and the faster inference speeds will be great for production environments. Uh, the proposal is tracked in the uh, RFC shown on, shown on the slide. Um, all opinions and ideas are very welcome. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great rest of the conference.